गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग गुड आफ्टरनून वेर एवर टाइम इट इज दिन दस वीडियो वेलकम टू माई चैनल माई नेम इज नायोमी फॉर दोस यू फॉर दोस यू डोंट नो मी एंड वेलकम टू माई वीडियो फॉर दोस यू आर सब्सक्राइबर्स वेलकम बैक गुड टू हैव यू हेयर आई होप यू आर गुड so you know what we are all about in this channel we do um study abroad tips if you want to study abroad you don't know where to begin if you're looking for scholarships all those sorts of things so if you're new please feel free to subscribe feel free to like the video if it is helpful to you and you know let's do this so in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you um tips that you can apply or you can do if you're looking to study abroad if you're looking to apply for different schools abroad so let's say you are in zimbabwe and then you want to start you want to study in australia but you know i know it's kind of hard because you might not really know where to begin or what to do but don't worry i got you girl i got you boy <laughs> this is the perfect video for you So today I'm going to be discussing two ways in which you can apply for schools abroad. One is you can do it yourself. Just apply for schools yourself. And then the other way is applying via an agent where you use an agent to apply on your behalf. So but first of all I'm going to start by elaborating the process or sharing some beneficial tips that you can use if you're trying to apply for school all on your own and then you want to do it yourself basically because there's a process that I have been through and I know how challenging and complicated it might be especially if you know you don't have anybody to help you or assist you in the process it can be a bit frustrating but these are the tips that I personally used and I felt like they were very helpful they were very beneficial and I hope they can be the same for you So without any delays I'll try to keep my videos as short as possible. So and then yeah, I'm going to be referencing my notes that I have here for you so that I don't forget anything. So the first tip if you want to apply for schools on your own, I think it's very simple. Know which country you want to study in. If you want to study abroad, know which country you are looking into. And then besides knowing the country, the country have a specific school. <laughs> What is wrong with my tongue today? Uh, <laughs> have a specific school where you want to study. If you want to study in the US, let's say maybe you're considering Texas, you're considering Ohio, or maybe Arizona. So know the specific university that has your desired course. May it be undergraduate, masters, or PhD. Have that university that you know you want to study in. and you want to study it and then also make sure that the program you are looking into it's exactly what you want because the different thing for example if you want a masters this must have as must have education and so on and so forth so be sure of those specific specifics <laughs> and make sure that it's in line with what you actually want to do So and also after you find out the school let's say for example Ohio if you want to study in Ohio in the USA be familiar with the entry requirements majority of the schools now are very advanced you can find all this information on their website so just go to the website of the school that you are interested in if it's central queensland in australia go to their website I uh, look for the course that you want if it's available click on it there will be all the details entry requirements sometimes they even have um what do you call the program the curricula uh, I forgot the name but like where they list all the courses that you will undergo in your program or in your study so that will be very helpful so know the entry requirements know the opening and closing dates when is it opening I know for majority of US uh, universities they will accept um applications all year round throughout the year you can send in your application and then they will enroll you for the next available semester but some of the schools is not the case you can find that they have opening dates and closing dates and then even before closing dates the program might be full because they offer admissions as they come you know so be sure of those things and make sure that you are familiar with them and then the other thing you also need to keep in mind is the application fee So university sometimes you need to send in your application fee 
as soon as you are processing as as you are sending in your application and then for some universities you pay application fee after you have sent in your application after they have accepted you but majority of them you send in the application while you are processing i mean the application fee while you are sending in your application so be sure of those things and let me i'm not even gonna lie with this one when you're applying for schools abroad they'll mostly use the us dollar like that's the standard currency most of the time and if you're from Botswana, that can be a bit expensive because um, an application fee, if it's 200, converted to Botswana Pula, that's around 2.5 wheelers. So you need to be prepared also financially. But as I also mentioned in my last videos, there are schools that do not have application fee. You can first start by looking those up. If they have your desired programs, go for it. Or the schools where you pay application fee after you have accepted, you have received your acceptance letter. So, you know, those are the things that you have to be mindful of. You have to budget well in time. Because the more schools you apply to, the better chance you stand. So, budget, 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 budget. Be prepared to pay that sum or that amount of money. And then also the other thing with schools, um, when you're applying for schools, sometimes they will offer scholarships and sometimes they will not you'll find that uh, for example schools such as ohio i'll mention ohio in the u.s because i once attended a seminar that seminar they came to ub one time university of Botswana one time so they were saying that they have scholarships for african students or from students in developing countries so you know those are some of the schools that you can look into so you know that if you apply but what happens is you have to first send in your application and then after sending in your application they'll have a column where you also apply for scholarships so scholarships can vary can be full scholarship can be partial or maybe they'll just offer you um tuition waiver or accommodation something like that so like i said you have to do intensive research this is not child's play when it comes to applying to schools abroad it's not child's play. And the good thing is you can do all of these things online. Basically, the websites will have all the information that you require. So just stay focused. It's a long process. It's a hard process. Be patient. Be very, very careful. You know, plan. Be organized because you're going to need it. Trust me. And then, ooh, I lost my page. You have to prepare the necessary documents. If you are applying for an undergraduate a degree, you don't really have to prepare much. You just have to prepare your certificates and maybe your motivation letter. This is whereby you just write where you are motivated to study that particular field, why you want to go into that field. And then if it's a master's degree, you'd have to have a research thesis or a proposal, something along those lines, along your research area. So with this one, the tip that I will give you that is very, very beneficial. If you're a master's student, obviously you're going to have to do research. Most schools will require you to state the person, the lecture, the professor that you want to do your research or your research is in line with. So if you're applying for a master's degree, be sure that you go into that school's website and then majority of the website will have departments and then under departments they'll have the faculty members and sometimes they'll also state the research areas of those faculty members so go into those research areas find the professor in line with the research you want to do and then be sure another tip that i'll give you that you mention this in your um, motivation letter your personal statement or your thesis just so that they can see that you are really determined to get into the schools. You you have everything figured out. Okay, if not everything, but you have some bit of light in what you want to do. For instance, what I did was um I when when I was applying to the UK, I would apply to Bristol, apply to oh my god, I applied to a lot of schools. <laughs> what is the other one? Manchester. 
oh my god i forgot the name but anyways that's not the main point the main point is i went into those websites and then my motivation letter because they wanted a motivation letter i will talk about my research and every time i sent out my application there is a portion where i mention my research area and who inspired me i would mention somebody from that school i was such a you know a lecture professor from that school and then know who carries the research and the fields that i'm interested in and then i would mention that per that person and their research work and how they inspired me and how i would like to know study under them or study the related fields that they're into that can also be an advantage for you so tailor make your you don't have to write a new motivation letter every time but you can just edit that part to make sure that you include a person from the school in which you are playing for this is for masters by the way but yeah even an undergrad you can do that you know you can still do that and then also yeah like i mentioned familiarize yourself with the stuff and then one other tip that i feel is very very important to share when i attended a lot of seminars um especially from Amer um, america united states universities you know the passion where they say are you a native english speaker and then you have to take yes and no take yes yeah take yes because if you spoke english at home you studied in english your entire life elementary primary secondary university you basically speak english so if they ask if you're a native uh, speaker just say yes what is your first language english what is your second language setswana or something like that this is very very important because when you've clicked yes you don't have to do the you don't have to do the language exam now this doesn't apply to all schools majority of the schools will say if, if you are from african countries you for sure have to do your eyelids your trifle but if you have an option to pick just say yes because you you do speak english right so that is one tip that i it will save you the cost of a language exam because languages exams are around 3000 pula in my country i'm not sure about other countries so it will save you that much money so just say yes are you a native speaker say yes this is very very important because i've never done a language test because i've always clicked yes it's not a crime it's not a crime you grew up in english english is your first language you spoke english at home you spoke english english at school you spoke english you studied in english so sometimes you don't have to make things difficult okay the second part this is whereby i get asked a lot is whereby you apply via an agent basically you get an agent a person to apply for schools on your behalf like i've mentioned this very long long process for applying for yourself and this can take months this is not a week's thing to do you cannot just do it in a week and it's done it can take months i used to take hours and hours on the computer researching about universities about courses about lectures about so on and so forth how to write how to do this but um the advantage when you're applying via an agent is you know you don't have that much stress a lot of agents will be country based do you want to study in australia there is an agent who covers australia for Botswana countries or something like that so what what they do is they will maybe ask you to mention three or five schools that you are interested in your preferred schools and then they will send applications for you on your behalf now don't get me wrong you still have to write your motivational letters you still have to send in your documents it's not like they do that for you but i know some agents will help you with your um with your what with your papers i think china admissions offer something like that they will help you they will consult your research your thesis your proposal i mean why do i keep on saying thesis your proposal your motivational letter with you and others don't so you know and then obviously the biggest disadvantage with applying via an agent is that it is very expensive 
the benefits is you know most of the time when you're applying via an agent you are almost guaranteed of admission and also another thing i should mention with agents sometimes agents just help you get into a school it depends on the country and then you have to maybe come and apply for scholarships again on your own or you have to sponsor yourselves and then some agents in universities where they offer where they offer scholarships the obviously the agent will apply for you and then the university will offer you a scholarship so it's not like when you apply by an agent you get admission and scholarship no that is not the case it varies and it's different the main advantage is that it's expensive it's a business it's a person they have expenses to cover i'm sure so it's pretty much expensive. I had to pay around 15,000, 15.5,000 because for me I was very desperate to do my masters like you know what I just didn't want to take a break. I so 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 wanted to do my masters. So I applied to schools on myself and I also used an agent. I did both of them. I applied for schools myself and I also used an agent. An agent was sort of like a backup plan. Initially, I didn't want to, I had no plans of applying via an agent. But on my Facebook page, there's this girl and then she was advertising this agent. Um, yeah, and then I just uh, inboxed her. I asked her about the whole thing and then she explained it to me. And I was like, okay, I can do this as a backup plan just in case my applications don't go well and then the other thing when you are using an agent is to make sure 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 that it's not a scam how do you make sure that it's not a scam number one they would not ask you to pay the full fee before you get your acceptance letters or yeah before you get your acceptance letters you only pay after they have you have gotten into the school you have been admitted that's how it works. Anybody else who ask you for money before that, mm, they are probably, you know. So, and another thing, maybe they will require you to pop out the application fee. The application fee, yeah, that one you have to pay even if you're doing it to yourself. And then the other thing when you get your admission, when you get your scholarship by an agent, is to make sure that you cross check that you reference with the school call your school to make sure is this offer legit is it true email them do something does the school exist is it a real school go online search it for yourself before you make any payments before you get scammed before you get what but all in all i think both those options are good now okay it's just for you to weigh out your options and see which one you can afford to do can you do it yourself yes do it yourself do you want to use an agent use an agent do you feel like you want to do both like me do both and be on the safe side that's all i can say let me see if i forgot anything else from my notes um yes i did uh prepare your documents even if you are using an agent, prepare your documents, prepare your thesis, prepare your everything. Why do I keep on saying thesis? Your proposal. But ladies and gentlemen, I think that is all. I try to make this presentation as brief as possible, but elaborating at the same time. I'm sorry, I'm a teacher, so you know, I cannot keep my videos short because uh, now and then I feel like I have to elaborate so that my students get me. I'm sorry, it's from the profession. But anyways, I hope this was beneficial. Uh, be sure that you email me. If you have any questions, I leave my email in the description. And then also leave a comment down below if there's something you don't understand. Reach out to me. And I'll also leave the name of the agent I used. Although I think she's mainly for China but at least i know she's legit and then there's another one i'll mention them in the description box so that you can check them for yourself oh i can just see it here for Bozama, i know creo my cousin used to creo consultancy it's legit and then the one i used is uh patsima oh no i think she changed the name len edu consultancy i'll write it somewhere there. so yeah those are the two 
so i think they're based in china and then for the australia one is the asbm i'm not sure i read the name somewhere here or confirm the name for you it's an abbreviation it has an a it has s it has m somewhere in there but for those ones i think they're for australia now these are agents they are expensive you should be you know ready to pay but the plus side most of the time when you use an agent you are almost guaranteed of admission i don't know how they do it but they do do it just make sure that it's not a scam okay ladies and gentlemen let me stop there let me end the video there thank you for joining me in this very long 20 minutes i hope it was educational i hope you benefited a lot thank you for the love thank you for the support please don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and tune in click it, click that notification bell so next time when i upload a new video you can receive the notification but otherwise thank you guys that is all for today i hope you enjoyed lots of love bye bye